So what do you call yourself? Welcome to the Los Angeles Show. Hey. Hey, what can I do for you this fine day? This is your destiny. Hot, hot, hot. Right now. Welcome to the Los Angeles Show. Kick it. Come on in and enjoy yourself. Right now. We gon' party like no one else. Welcome to the Los Angeles Show. Hey, and welcome back to another episode of the Latangela Show podcast. You know, it does my heart well to have this time together. Well, we'll chat about this. We'll chat about that. And I know I've been dropping episode after episode and I won't hold you long. But today I came across some random research that I really want to share. And I got my cousin in the hot seat on the tan line. Well, my cousin in my mind, Chloe Bailey. When I tell you this beautiful songstress, this powerful songwriter, she is at it yet again. And she has inked some lyrics. She has hummed some melodies and produced some tunes that you can't afford to miss out on. Trouble in paradise. Yeah, I think she has inked herself a masterpiece in this one. But it's only fair that we get the inside scoop from Chloe Bailey herself. So I want you to keep it locked. When it comes to random research, you know I dig deep. And tis the season, I know I missed cuffing season or is cuffing season on the cusp. I'm not sure either or, but according to Forbes Health, a lot of us, we have these dating app icks, like certain things we just don't like about dating apps. I have yet to try one. I don't know if I want to swipe up, swipe down, even turn the thing on. However, some got a shake and he is not on aisle three. <laughs> so hmm, Forbes, what you talking about? A recent survey of adults who have used a dating app within the last year They've uncovered their biggest flaws about dating apps. When asked which quality of dating profiles would make users less likely to choose another, you have over-edited or over-filtered the picture. It's about 12 of y'all in the profile picture. You brag about yourself too much in the headline. And we're also turned off by the lack of effort that you put into your profile for grammar and spelling. Surely. You have spell check on that phone. You don't like my lingo? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> okay. Forever alone. Mm. Well, I guess that's out for now. Tattoo record. I've always wanted to make my debut in the Guinness World Book of Records. Being that I am inkless, I know that I won't make it for this one. And the, the Guinness World Book Records, they now have somebody that's 36 years of age and has 99.98% of her body covered in tattoos. Her tattoos go from her scalp to the soles of, of her feet, including her eyelids, her eyeballs, gums, and tongue. She didn't stop there. Once she got her tongue tattooed, she also had it split. Mm, mm, like, a, like a snake. Ah! Yeah, I know. Ooh, the nerve, but... She made Guinness World Book of Records for it. So there's that. Mm. <laughs> Did you know that there's this thing called chicken fear? Now there's an actual title for it. It's called electrophobia. Electrophobia is the fear of chickens. One case study tells the story of an 18 year old woman who had a frightening encounter with a chicken that scared her so bad she can't eat fried chicken, baked chicken, don't want to know why the chicken crossed the road. She is a case of electrophobia, fear of chicken. Mm, the more you know. <laughs> now, I know we talk about it all the time. It's just maybe we want to do things differently in this season and we don't know how. Well, the first thing is the first thing. You got to get started. Goals, going over all little steps trying to make sure that we're staying on track. 2025 is literally knocking at the door. Like, I can't believe that 2024 just zipped by me so fast because this was the year I was attempting to fix my life <laughs> and I have yet to start. So <laughs> there's that. But I'm edging out all of my goals and I plan on finishing 2024 a lot stronger than I started it. And it was a pretty strong start. So if there's something that you would like to finish by the end of the year, this is just the word of encouragement to put your best foot forward 
and get into action. There is so much to be done and nothing comes to a dreamer, but some good rest, hopefully. <laughs> I want you to keep it locked. Coming up, we're going to check in with Chloe Bailey, Trouble in Paradise. And it's all good right here with the Los Angeles Show podcast. Hello, Chloe. Hi. So if you hey, can... how are you? I'm fantastic. How are you? Marvelous, darling. We finally inched our way to the weekend. I yes. got the one and the only Chloe in the hot seat and on the tan line. I mean, life is looking up. What you mean? <laughs> <laughs> Look, thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule because I know you've been busy. You got a lot going on and I have questions that need answers. I have answers for you. Thanks for having me. You have such lovely energy through the screen even. Well, thank you, dear. And you know, we got to get you to the capital city soon. I know you're out and about traveling. You got these 16 banging tracks that I just went through, Trouble in Paradise. And you were causing trouble for a lot of people in this because you, gir girl, listen, from the boy by, I, I need to know, as you are inking all of the inspiration and the motivation and the soundtrack of others' lives in this moment, is any of this reflective like the Journal of Chloe? Oh, absolutely. You know, I I executive produced the project. I wrote on every song. You know, I worked with some incredible collaborators and they just helped bring my vision to life as well. You know, not all of the sad heartbreak songs per se are about one person. I've uh -huh. been inspired from like you know, previous relationships and, you know, things I'm going through currently. So it's like, as a creative, you just use what you can to inspire you for that moment. And right. I was literally writing away my troubles in paradise. And what I love about this project is, yes, even though there might be some ups and downs as you listen to it, I'm never taking it too seriously. You yeah. know, I'm always joking about it or, you know, making a funny joke instead of saying, just, instead of saying, oh boy, I don't need you. I'm good on my own. I'm saying, I don't need the flowers you send me because I, I have my rose. Or Girl, as, if that's not well, the infomercial of the century though, like yes. they really need to reach out to you on that one because right? I think you just did them a favor and it really put them over the top. <laughs> right. And also like might as well. It sounds like a heartbreak song and it is, but it's like, I wish you would have just been straight up and real with me so I could have had someone on the side as well right. you know and then with same lingerie I feel like that's the saddest song on the record it's still really sexy reminiscing on these past physical moments that you had with your lover and it's like I can never wear the same lingerie that I had on with you because it just reminds me too much of you so it's like serious topics but you know with lighthearted subjects tied to it and one thing I love about you as an artist, we never know what we're going to get, but we know it's so consistent in being uniquely you. It's mm. like they can't put you in a box because if you want to take it on this side, you can. If you want to take it on yeah. this side, and even some of the tempo changes that you're doing and the remix, you caught me off guard with that. Have I told you? Like, I was like, wait a second. And then you <laughs> took it somewhere completely different and you brought it right back. I said, this girl is a genius. I just Thank wonder you. if you realize how, how in tune with so many because they have a lot of artists, a lot of writers that have paved the way. And we're hearing some of their contributions in your work, but we still get all of Chloe. Yes, yes. It's definitely important to pay homage to those that inspired me. And, you know, if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be able to do what I do creatively. And even, you know, paying homage to Janet Jackson at the end of Nice Girls Finish Last. Yeah. Like, I just love how classy she made her sensuality through her music. Yeah. And a lot of times she inspires me in that way as well as Donna Summers. And, you know, I'm 26 years old. I'm a grown woman. I, I don't go into the studio intentionally saying, okay, I'm going to write a raunchy song. No, it's just, I'm writing my experiences in my life. I'm a woman. Yeah. And if raunchy comes out, then raunchy comes and we'll exactly. give them a remix and take it super raunchy if that's what they need. Exactly. <laughs> as you're writing and you're going through some of this, as an artist, do you ever feel as if you've tapped out? Like, how do you find that creative space to keep it going? Because that, that can be a lot of pressure because we got some high expectations out of you. Absolutely. For a while, I realized I was just creating and just going to the studio in L.A. just so I had something to do, a distraction to run from, you know, whatever I was going through. And it was almost like, yes, I was creating cool stuff, but everything started to sound the same. And, you know, 
my manager, Charmay, I'm always playing everything for her. And she was like, you need to be inspired again. That spark needs to be reignited. And so she's like, I know you love St. Lucia. Why don't you, you know, go there and just create and see how you feel? Because she's like, I, I see like you're becoming like stagnant when you're creating. It's not as exciting for you anymore. And I was like, you're right. And once I went there and started creating, it was like a whole new world opened up for me. I was just, you know, we'd go to dance halls and we'd go to street parties and hearing the sound influences and seeing people dance upon each other really inspired me as well as the waves of the ocean. So creating as I'm looking out of the horizon and seeing this vast, beautiful water, it was more than inspiring for me. And I literally wrote away my troubles in paradise. And you're taking us on a musical journey with this. So I'm grateful that you took it on over there and you just fell victim to whatever the ambiance called for because you did that. Thank if you. you had to choose, and I know as an artist, we're not supposed to pick our favorites. It's like asking somebody to pick their favorite kid. Mm -hmm. But if there's one on this project that screams to you the most, it, it's going to hit everybody a little different whenever they hear it and maybe even come back and listen to it again. But that one song that may have been tougher for you to release than not. Ooh, not necessarily tough for me to release, but I think my love for different songs happen each day. And I think for today, I'll have to say Never Let You Go and Nice Girls Finish Last. I love it. And since they change every day, we'll just have to ask you again tomorrow. Yeah. I love it. And in yeah. the meantime... When can we find it? Where can we find it? And will you be hitting the road coming to a city near us soon? Because we need you here ASAP. <laughs> well, Trouble in Paradise is available everywhere on all streaming services. You can buy it. You can purchase it. And you can find me everywhere at Chloe Bailey. And you know I love performing. Last year, I did two tour legs. Even I did the second tour leg of my debut album with a healing fractured foot. Girl. So, you know, I'm definitely down to do some one-offs right now let people hear the music and sing songs with me and tour will probably happen next year i'm assuming just and we're looking forward to it yeah thank and you and in the meantime i know you'll always be creating so as things come up and you're taking your tours around the world or just say look i found something cool feel free to jump in the hot seat and on the tan line and consider it done yeah i know you have more work to do so i'm gonna let you chase the sun or let the sun chase you but either Ooh, way i love get that after it i love you and there's absolutely nothing you can do about it Oh, thank you. That was such a good close off. I appreciate <laughs> you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm so proud of you.